been a while since I've uh, made a video log and or blog or whatever. I don't do them often as I spend most of my time on Facebook. Sometimes uh, speaking to deaf ears and and uh, you know it is what it is. If I keep my mouth shut, then I'm not using the mouth that God gave me either. So I'm going to talk uh, about tolerance and what tolerance looks like. Um, <clears throat> in a sense, there are lots of things that come across as sounding as super duper awesome that we hold on to, and sometimes it's not, but you know, we'll, we'll hold on to things that they make us feel good, because that's what we tend to do. Um, think of the phrase, let haters hate. That's a, that's a tolerance thing. Let people do what they're going to do. It doesn't make what they're doing right. It doesn't condone their behavior. It doesn't force their behavior to line up with yours. It doesn't force them to believe what you believe. It doesn't indoctrinate. Let the haters hate. God created us. And this is probably where most of you had said, Okay, you lost me. I mentioned God. You know what? Who's being intolerant? Um, we weren't created by an accidental explosion. We were created on purpose, with a purpose, by a God who loves us. And yes, God is love. And yes, love wins. In our culture, somehow we've taken... The word love and put it onto something different and we uh, decided that you know what this is what love is and in, in my opinion similar to the um, Tina Turner song with that definition of love what's love got to do got to do with it Anyways, yeah, um, American Idol, I'm here. You can look me up. Anyways, uh, so what I was uh, meaning to get to is we've taken lots of things and reappropriated them to do something different. We've taken the rainbow. God's promise that he would not flood this earth again with water. And yeah, gay means happy um so we've taken the word gay and yes sometimes it comes across as a derogatory term and yes gay is happy and gay is a wonderful thing and some people have turned it into a negative thing and you know what when it comes down to it haters are gonna hate and God did create all of us on purpose, and it wasn't just to procreate, it was also to inhabit this earth and to also share the message of good news, that our works don't get us to heaven. It's his blood that was spilled for us on the cross and our belief in him that gets us to heaven. And you got all walks of belief out there that says this is the right way, this is the right way, this is the right way. Jesus is the only one that claimed I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And people throw their hands up in the air and worship him and then go around acting a fool. And yeah, I get it. People will look at that and say, well, if that's what a Christian is, that's a hypocrite and I want no part of it. And so, there you have it. People are turning away from the God that is and the God that loves, calling people that God so loved enough to die for, hypocrites and some are yes because they're not they're not acting in the way that they're preaching they act and they want other people to act the way that they tell 
Well, look at our government, folks. But but not too many people are throwing their arms up in the air and and saying, oh, we we hate our government because the majority want our government to um, not necessarily be so tolerant, but almost iron-fisted toward the people that aren't tolerant of us. So we have a God, Christians, we have a God that doesn't force us to love him in return. We have a God that says, let the people choose what they want to do with their life. I know my plans for them they don't if they choose to not accept my gift of salvation that's fine i'm still going to give them breath i'm still going to give them brain power i'm still going to give them the the heart that pumps the blood in their body that their brain doesn't have to think about every single heartbeat i'm still going to give them the ability to navigate in this world by my grace that is sufficient and yet, people will write him outside of their life processes. They will take the gift that they've been given, and they hear about eternal life, and they will say, no, uh-uh, nope, I don't believe it. My teacher told me about the Big Bang, and that's what I believe. We were created from a rock, and, you know, non-life created life, and that's what I believe, and so I become my own God with a purposeless existence except for my own, and I make things according to what I want my destiny to be. And you know what, that's fine. He gives you that ability to formulate, and there are ways that seem right to man and in the end lead to death. You know, hey, go for it. Put your faith in yourself. That's fine. He lets you do it. He's not going to force you to see him. He's not going to force you to see his plan. He doesn't force you to treat others as you would want to be treated. He doesn't force you to measure up. It's only by his grace that we are even existent. It's by his love for us that he created us. He is so much more merciful than people give him credit for. And so yes, God is tolerant. He is slow to anger. It doesn't mean that he's just going to ignore his wrath. There will be a day. And we are all going to have to face up to judgment based on our choice. Did we accept a free gift or did we spit in his face? So until then, he's tolerant. And he wants Christians to also be tolerant. And not to the point of celebrating wrong choices you know no no one wants to wake up and find their kid has already you know started to sneak out of the house and and oh my gosh they're, they're out hanging out at night and they're they're drinking they're smoking they're hooking school hey son or daughter i want to just so celebrate your being independent and that my rules mean nothing to you and you are just so independent and you've got the world wrapped around your finger and you have become your own authority figure. Uh, how, how does that work? You know, because God, who is love, also disciplines his children in whom he loves. Our culture today has taken tolerance <clears throat> to mean acceptance. And if you don't accept my choice as being right, then you're a hater and you don't love me. How off the wall is that? For anybody to step outside of themselves, you will see why our culture has gotten to where it is. Our, our teenagers, and I'm just going to call a spade a spade because... You know, people can call evil evil. They don't want to label it sin. But when you have a bully who grows up thinking that the world owes him happiness, you know, the, the Constitution says uh, everybody has their, uh, you know, 
the, the right to pursuit of happiness. And yet we think that happiness comes as a given. And, and if you ain't pursuing it, well, you ain't doing anything to, you know, and not that it's all about achieving happiness for yourself. That's still kind of selfish. But in our culture right now, we've got a bunch of parents that don't want to be parents. They've got the kids that have their parents wrapped around their fingers and you know the parents are almost afraid to discipline their child because any act of um, disciplining their child comes across as hate and and child abuse and again there is a line let let the consequence result in that action that it so deserves <clears throat> that, that's the whole eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth you, you don't you don't put your kid in a hot box out in a 90 degree car for uh, you know 16 18 hours as a consequence of you're not being able to keep your alcohol under control you know crap happens you, you don't you don't uh, and, and again people are gonna judge me you don't know him he wasn't in his frame of mind and you know what you're right uh, anyways I'm getting off topic when, when you look at the parent who can't even discipline their child because it comes across as cruel and unusual punishment, taking a belt to the backside. I'm not talking the belt buckle. I'm not talking about a, a whip. I'm talking about a belt or a hand, an open hand done in love to let the child know that I'm hoping that this affects you in such a way that it prevents you from continually making poor choices later on. But no, now tolerance means you are supposed to not only accept that your child or your neighbor's child or your neighbor did something wrong, but then you're also to celebrate it. Hey, wow, you know, it looks like uh, somebody's stealing that car. I'm going to put it on YouTube, and then I'm going to get a whole bunch of hits, and then I'm going to be labeled any which way <laughs> by your fellow man. Somebody who's going to say, well, you should have stopped them, and then other people said, well, you know, that, that evidence isn't going to be held admissible in court, uh, and then the person's going to potentially be able to salt and sue you for um, oh, defamation of character or, or whatever. You know, nobody knows what the truth is anymore. And the Bible is the truth. And yet people don't want to believe, don't want to receive that gift, and God allows them their choice to walk in their walk and doesn't force them. How do we, as a Christian, who know better and to know the guilt of sin has been washed of us and to know that the burden of all of this world has been taken off of our shoulders and it's been placed on him and he's gone through every single thing that we've gone through and knows what we're going through and and we have to recognize that not everybody is following Jesus not everybody is seeking the truth not everybody it is redeemed. Not everybody seeks that which seeks the lost. And so we are in walks of all various different things. We all have a different pattern that we tend to, to follow in based on our history, our culture, or whatever. And yet there's a difference between all paths lead to heaven and all paths lead to God. We will be judged by one God. And yes, he tolerates while we're on earth. He's not going to be so tolerant when it comes to the end. That this life that we're given on planet earth for just a moment, a vapor, and it's going to fly and time does fly. But we have no idea when our day is going to come. We gamble. We so want to be like that thief on the cross. 
on my last breath, I'm just going to say, God, can you remember me? I want to get in. It's a gamble. That's for sure. God knows everything at the end, at the beginning, but he doesn't force us to follow his plan. He has an idea where he'd like us to be, and sometimes we have no clue. I believe in an absolute truth. Sometimes I absolutely miss it. That's where people start looking at Christians as, ah, oh, you know what? You're a failure in my eyes. And at the same token, who, who are we making God? Are we making ourselves God? Are we making others God? Are we making our dollar God? Are we making the government God? There are so many things out there used by Satan as an influence to distract. And God knows who he is and he is tolerant. And he knows the difference between trash talk and speaking in faith. Sometimes I don't think the people that call themselves Christians know the difference. And again, you know, are we continually seeking the truth? Or are we just hoping that, well, God knows my heart. He knows me. Did, did, did you buy into a false gospel that, that worked on your emotions? How many people have fallen for the person at the bar who just said all those right things to make you fall for that knight in shining armor and it turned into a one night stand and you were duped? How many people got impregnated by that guy and then blamed God for letting it happen? Whose fault is it? Is it God's for letting it happen? Is it ours for putting ourselves in a bad situation? Did he allow it to happen so we could see the error of our ways? Did he allow it to happen so that we could see that, you know what? I gave you free choice. I'm not going to make you a robot. We don't know all the answers. I don't know. My eternal father's entire plan for everybody else. If somebody comes to you and says this is this is your plan by God, well, you almost even have to check yourself too. Like this guy is telling me my plan through his eyes. So th there are going to be plenty of folks that try to deceive you. And, 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 and it's a terrible shame that people have used the Bible to control people to, you know, ante up, throw the money in the offering plate, sow your seed, faith, all this stuff that focuses on giving to get and you know what it's still seeking a crown it's still manipulative and it's it's something that God tolerates when you truly seek the truth <laughs> and, and you and you fear the Lord which is the beginning of knowledge I mean you start to have the scales pulled off your eyes and you start to see the the, the wickedness that we all have fallen short of the glory of God in, you start seeing these things that Satan has done from the very get-go. Can you really trust God? Can you really believe everything he said? And yet, he tolerates it. So, as a true Christian, knowing that we are not to judge people outside of the kingdom because they are in God's jurisdiction, they will be judged by their works. In the end, it's going to be believers and non. In the end, he's even going to get rid of death and destruction and even hell will be done away with. 
But until that time comes, that judgment is in God's jurisdiction for people outside of the faith. For people inside the faith, there's always going to be a continual prompting of the Holy Spirit in you. If truly you are in the kingdom, you can be convicted. The Holy Spirit does convict. He does not condemn. People outside of the kingdom get that confused. And even people that are starting to get into the kingdom, they still don't like to be told, well, that's that's wrong because, oh, that hurts me. That hurts me. Oh, I don't like it. If, if God, our, our shepherd, uses his rod to keep us from going astray, and we say, how dare you? Get away from me. I want to walk my way. Well, doesn't he have the knowledge more than we do to kind of keep us from hurting ourselves. If he is the master potter and we are broken vessels being made new and he's got he's got the better vision than we do. He sees where our kinks are and he wants to fill in the divots that have been chipped out of us and the parts that are going out too far. He wants to pad those back in. Isn't he very worthy and able to work his hands on us we're still in our flesh until we're dead in the flesh completely we're still dying to the sins and we're no longer sinners we are made new creatures but we're still in this skin and we die to it daily to let him live in us we aren't supposed to tolerate the sin and celebrate its work that we sometimes let it deceive us and so causing our fellow brother to stumble and we are to be holy as he is holy and yet when it comes down to it our perfection isn't by our works it's by his blood when when a pruner prunes the wild bush that's going astray kind of growing wild isn't the pruner the master gardener able and willing by his grace and mercy to be able to trim those hedges that are going off course yes we, we have some false teaching out there that says if anything comes against you cast it out how often have we told our master shepherd get thee behind me satan because we don't even know who he is anymore and, and we, like the prodigal son, we want all of our blessings now. We want our father to just give us the inheritance. How many people have been misled? And yet God tolerates it. So, in this, in this, uh, in this United States of America, where we had the, the, the alleged 70% confessing Christians um, kind of show their their true colors when it came down to uh, the voting polls and even more recently the the majority in favor of of a wrong behavior hey you know even Jesus's disciples he had over 70 at one point lots of people followed him when they had the the multitudes of, of people being fed with the bread and the fish being multiplied and having lots of leftovers and it was all the stuff that we could be filled with and, and we were we were very well prospered in our flesh and just hey this is great this is awesome jump on board and and when they couldn't quite understand a teaching a lot of them fell away and Jesus asked his disciples that started the rest, even Judas being in there, there were only 12 left. And even he knew that Judas was going to betray him. He didn't kick him out. He tolerated his being in there. But he let the people go. It was their choice. He didn't, he didn't stop from feeding them when they were on board with where he was going. 
when they made a choice to say, you know what, I'm out, he let them go. We all have choices. He doesn't manipulate us. He doesn't force us. He loves us. He loves us enough to let us choose right or wrong. And when we've realized, just like the prodigal son in our own circumstances, that you know what, I don't even deserve to be called my father's child. I would rather work as a slave for him than to try to keep doing things my way and perish. The father took that child back and he celebrated because the lost was now found, the dead was now alive. He didn't micromanage his child as he went away. He didn't keep spies after him. He let him go. And, and that's probably what we should do. Not giving up the sharing of the gospel. Not doing unto others as we know we would like done for us. Not just ignoring them. Jesus told us to love the sinners of which we all were so do we celebrate wrong choices absolutely not we celebrate when God allows them to come back and it's based on their choice it's a relationship God created us but whether, whether God brings them in or they come back on their own knees, it's a start. And we should, we should encourage people in the faith to stay in the faith. Because our Lion of Judah has an imposter out there. He looks like a lion too, and yet he's around the corner seeking to devour. And yet God tolerates it. I hope this uh, I hope this is very clear and accurate to all people. May God bless you. I love you all. And may God continue his good work that he started. He is the author, the perfecter, the finisher of our faith. When his kingdom comes down, we won't need faith anymore. His glory will surpass our faith. I love you. Stand strong in the Lord. Amen.